Hey everybody, uh, this is Noah Glazer with LegendZelda.net, and today I am doing another addition to the Let's Play Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Um, today I also have a new special guest commentator with us. Uh, you guys may know him as the Zebra Gamer. He is one of, uh, he's not a YouTube affiliate yet, but probably will be at some point, and he also does a bunch of Let's Plays. But why don't you introduce yourself a little bit more? Uh, hey, I'm Mr. Zebra Gamer. Yeah, I'm a Let's Player too. Um, <laughs> I don't know what much to say, but more than that, I'm a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> He's a zebra. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, this part of the Let's Play is going to take you through the first half of the Water Temple and Twilight Princess. Uh, last, last left off at the entrance, and um, right now I'm going to take you up through the mini-boss where you will get the claw shot. So right now, uh, you just have to equip the uh, bow and arrow, and uh, you have to make it the bomb arrow by selecting the water bombs to knock down the stalactites, which will allow you to jump up on them and climb to the higher platform. Uh, as I'm doing that, uh, why don't you tell me about your uh, latest Let's Play that you're doing? Uh, yeah, currently I'm doing uh, Super Mario Galaxy Blind, like, basically completely blind, I've seen gameplay. But it's all first gameplay experience. I've never touched a game besides this Let's Play. So that's sort of cool. Very nice. That's kind of like what I'm doing here. I've played Twilight Princess, but I have not played it since it came out in 2006. So I'm, it's kind of new to me in ways. Yeah. When Skyward Sword comes out, I will hopefully be doing a Let's Play to that on my first attempt through. So that would be something interesting. Yeah, I was hearing about Skyward Sword. It looks pretty cool. I like it. I think the uh, graphics are really cool. I honestly like uh, the Wind Waker's better than uh, Twilight Princess, so I like the uh, whole colorful, vibrant creativity twist that they put with uh, Skyward Sword. Yeah. At this, like at the same time, it's sort of like some parts of Zelda are supposed to be like you know, like sort of like a dark mood, and you can't really do that with like the happy textures and stuff. Yeah, I remember um, E3 two years ago. They released that uh, concept art for what is now known as Skyward Sword, and it was supposed to be the piece of artwork to kind of like be the intro, like "Hey, we're working on Zelda," just so you know. And everybody thought it was going to be. Uh, continuation of, like Twilight Princess. It was really a uh, mature looking, same kind of graphic style. But then last year at E3, they completely went the other direction on us. Everybody was expecting a dark looking Link, and all of a sudden we have a uh, blend of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. It's kind of like, I would say, a modified Ocarina of Time to a degree, but more colorful. Yeah. I can see what you're saying there. I don't play the games that much. I play them when, you know, I have time to and I feel like playing them. But I do follow them. Like, I follow, like, what, like, Nintendo's updated them on and I see the trailers and stuff. Alright, um, here in this video, I guess I'll go back to the Let's Play for a second since that's what you guys are here to listen to. Uh, we're just in what I kind of call the central room. I am just uh, pulling these levers to rotate the platform. A stairwell so I can get to different uh, areas and I am just going to go all the way over here where I'll get that Ooko guy pretty sure it's how you pronounce it but uh, if you guys don't remember this guy allows you to uh, exit the uh, dungeon and return to where you use the mat kind of like the warp portals in the old uh, handheld Zelda games oh yeah like uh, Link's Awakening right yep that was the best yeah. game ever <laughs> Yeah, that was like one of the very few Zelda games that I actually got to play as a kid. And that, I was a, the time. that was my first Zelda game that I played. I uh, I bought it for my brother for a Christmas present, I believe. He came home from school saying that some kids were talking about Zelda and how cool it was and how he wanted it. And I'm like, oh, you're never going to play this. But he said he was, so I bought it for him. <laughs> and I ended up getting obsessed with it way more than he did. So, now I own a site on it, and I'm making videos, so it was obviously a pretty good game. Yeah. I remember, I, like, I got so lost in that game, I was only, like, young. <laughs> I got, like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know you had to, like, 
give that powder stuff to the raccoon dude and he turn into the <laughs> Mario. <laughs> so I, I spent just hours collecting rupees in that one field until I had like a thousand. Yeah, and you needed that many. The bow and arrow was like 990 rupees or something. Or something yeah. ridiculous. I would always steal it. But then as soon as you walked back in there, the guy would kill you. Mm -hmm. Like, the old games, they used to have cool glitches and um, cheats and stuff like that where you could steal items, but they don't do that anymore, really. Yeah. You could screen warp in the original Link's Awakening. Just bypass any screen you wanted. It's a good way to kind of cheat and get through the game and like you could I've seen speed runs where people people use the um screen warping cheat and they get through a game in like 20 minutes but yeah. it almost seems like there's like more effort into some of the older games than there is now there's just like more creativity put into it I definitely think so especially seeing the last two uh, handheld Zelda games they have nothing on the originals of Link's Awakening and the two Oracle games those games were packed full of content, and then Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, though they had content and stuff, it just wasn't very fun to me, and I had no motivation to play past the main storyline. I tried it. I tried, like, the one on the emulator. Like, I think the first one before Spirit Tracks, where you had to run around with your stylus. I did not like that at all. Like, no. I'd rather use the directional pad or a joystick or whatever. That's more of a convenience. I've never been a fan of the touch controls, and I honestly don't even like the Wii's motion controls. I don't, uh... I just want to use a controller, honestly. Yeah. I guess I'm one of the few remaining, since we now have the Kinect, where everyone's waving around like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> All this other stuff. I just like simple games. Yeah. I don't remember, like, the first time I played a 3D Zelda game, like, I tried to press the button to jump, and I realized you can't <laughs> jump with a button. I'm like, what is this? You can jump in Skyward Sword, it looks like, so that's gonna be cool. Yeah, hopefully you can. There's a, it looks like there's a little meter, like there's a magic meter in a bunch of the games. It looks like there's a energy meter of the sorts where it controls how much you can jump, how much you can run, how much you can hold onto vines and stuff for, so. Yeah a couple of new additions to some gameplay elements for the series. Um, here we are back in the central room again. Uh, I've just kind of gone and gotten some keys and stuff. Do you remember there was a door that was locked earlier here in this upper platform, so I'm going to roll around to it and go in that way. I'm opening the door and um, just going to run past this enemy again. And keep on going. Uh, what I'm working to do here is to uh, get the water flowing so I can it'll do a couple of things. It will first, it will get water going all throughout the area. It will start a little spinning wheel in one part which allows you to go underneath it and get access to areas. And it will also start generating some energy of the sorts to different areas where things will start spinning, allowing you to jump to it and access other areas that you previously unable to do. So, um, Zebra here has uh, not actually played Twilight Princess. Nah, I haven't. Well, tell us why? Well, originally because I don't own a GameCube, but now I do on the Wii, it's just that I usually can't pick up much money because, you know, 14-year-olds usually don't get jobs that quickly. <laughs> no. Uh, I was I was like 15 when uh, Twilight Princess was announced, so I was right there with you. I saved up uh, all my money in a little envelope so I could get uh, Twilight Princess when it came out, and then the game was delayed a billion different times, so by the time it did come out, I had a job, had more than enough money for it, but it's worth playing through once if you do get the money. I think you can probably get for maybe $15, $20 on eBay or something now. I did try Wind Waker recently, though. That's not bad. I like it. It's my uh, second slash third favorite Zelda game. I consider the Oracles to be my first, and then, like, I guess, first and second, since there's two of them, so Wind Waker is my third. The thing that, like, frustrates me the most about, like, the Zelda games is that, like, you always have to have a guide, like, right next to you. Yeah. 
Well, after you play uh, a couple of them, you get used to it because they don't really change the whole format around a lot, which is something that a lot of fans have been uh, kind of complaining about. And uh, the dungeon overworld world, um, formula has basically remained unchanged since uh, Ocarina of Time. And all the puzzles, there really hasn't been a whole lot of new additions. There's a few where they kind of spin off of the kind of like original puzzles that they do, but it's all the same. So once you play two or three of the Zelda games, you're pretty much good to go for the rest. Mm -hmm. So hopefully the new Wii Motion controls will add a twist to it, I guess. It's supposed to be. In some of the interviews, they've been talking about how the gameplay is going to be different. So they've yet to actually show us how, but... Um, I know in a couple of the interviews they are talking about how um, you'll be in a dungeon and not realize that you're in a dungeon because I guess the overworld is going to be kind of like a dungeon and you'll also find yourself without your sword at times which will add a little twist to it I guess. Mm -hmm. um, back here in this video I started to climb up those vines but I want to show you guys up here if you guys need rupees for any reasons there's a uh, decent amount up this set of vines so once I get there it will be some pots that you can break open and uh, just get yourself some extra money if you need it and then I'm going to run back to where I just was and continue climbing up those vines <laughs> usually why I don't play that many Zelda games is because I sort of grew up with more of the simpler games so that's usually what I steer towards when I have an option so are you a die-hard Nintendo fan, or do you also play Xbox and stuff? I don't play much Xbox at all. I've only played the Xbox 360. I've only, I've only, I've only been on there once. And yeah. I've never played the original Xbox, but first two consoles were the Sony PlayStation 1 and the Sony PlayStation 2. So that's like my main line sort of console, but Nintendo comes like right after it. Alright. Uh, I just got a Ape Escape for the PS1 back in December. remember playing that as a kid. I somehow lost my disc. But it's a pretty interesting game. Kind of fun. Yeah. PS1 had a lot of good games. But I didn't think there was a whole bunch on the PS2 that was really worth playing. The um, one series that really shines um, in the PS2, in my opinion, is the Jack and Daxter series. I remember the first... Two, maybe three of those were really good, and then they kind of started becoming trashier as it went on. It's kind of like the Spyro and Crash on the PS1. They used to be really, really good games, and now they're just garbage. That's the reason because, like, like Jack, Jack 1, 2, and 3 were made by the original creators, and then they made the fourth game, which was not made by the original creators. Same thing with Crash and Spyro. Like, they were really good on the PS1, but as soon as they moved on to the PS2, they were really bad. Because yeah. the original creators weren't making them. What happened was they got in a lawsuit with Universal Studios because they owned, owned both of the characters and the developers wanted to leave. Huh. Remember uh, Ripto's Rage? Spyro was one of my favorite games on a PS2 or yeah. PS1. And uh, I recently played uh, Spyro, I think it was Dawn of the Dragon on the Wii. First um, Spyro game I've played since the PS1. And... It was just completely horrible, nothing like the originals. I was collecting little gems for health and stuff, and uh, it wasn't really a, an adventure game. You're just mostly flying around and constantly... It's like you had to do combo attacks. That was like the basis of the game. It was not very good. Yeah. That era has almost dipped a little, but there's still some hope at the end of the light. Like, I know that Naughty Dog says whenever they have time, because they don't have a big crew, I'm... I'm guessing their crew is probably about 20 or 30 people, which is a small crew for a game design group. Yeah. But they get a lot done, but the thing is they only work on one game at a time, so they're thinking after they release Uncharted 3 that they might work on some more Jack and Daxter from what I've been reading. That'll be good. I, I also saw that they do have a new Spyro game coming out, and it's weird looking so far from what I've seen. Yeah. Toys! that you can like scan into your game and do stuff with them. It's 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 I think it's definitely going to pu like just pretty much blow up the series in a bad way, I mean. <laughs> like every like Spire fan I know that has watched that 
automatically gave up. They're like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> so oh. it's not gonna do them any good. No, it's looking pretty bad. Hope they don't do that with uh, Zelda anytime soon. Yeah, the thing is, Nintendo completely owns it, while those two yeah. game, those two series, Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, they were like partially owned, and then they got pretty much unrightfully taken away. And we see what happens to Zelda when Nintendo lets somebody else make, and we get the uh, CDI games, which are yeah. quite, quite amazing looking. I've never played them, but I definitely. I've heard a lot of really bad things about them. Alright, um, here we are again. If you haven't been paying attention, uh, I've got the water turned on now. So this thing is now spinning, so I'm able to jump through it. So I'm going to jump through this newly um, accessed door. Just going to run in there real quick and uh, grab a key. It's right here in this chest to your right. Again, this is the GameCube version. Uh, if you're playing the Wii version, that chest will be to your left. I don't understand why they had to do that still, but apparently they had to. <laughs> I think they just did it to make people realize it's not a 100% port. What, what they were saying is that Link is normally left-handed, which is fine and all. So, in the GameCube version, since you didn't have to use the Wiimote, they made him left-handed and they put everything on one way. But for the Wii, since most people are right-handed, they made Link hold it with his right hand, his sword, but they some reason had to switch everything to the opposite side as well. I don't understand why they had to do that. I guess it's sort of like a direction thing, because don't you hold the nunchuck on the right hand? I still haven't figured that out, even though I'm watch playing Super Mario Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, you do. But you can just still have him hold it. Why does he have to go to the left instead of going to the right, though, when you just need to hold it? with your different hand. I don't understand why they had to do that. I don't know. <laughs> Less thumb movement. <laughs> They're interesting people at Nintendo. Um, I'm going to use that key I just got here. Uh, with this, I'm going to be coming to the near end of this video here in a second. I just have to uh, put on the iron boots here to sink to the bottom of this water area. Uh, run to the end, and I'm going to blow up this boulder with a uh, bomb. So, after this, I believe I am on the mini boss, which is a giant frog that spews little mini tadpoles. It's kind of creative and annoying. Alright, that bomb has been blown up, so we can now go through. I'm going to smack that guy just for good luck, and uh, when I was uh, recording this, I thought I got eaten by this clam, but I actually rolled past him. The screen went dark, and I thought I was like having to go back to the beginning, but it was just me going to the next room, because I didn't even notice that the end of the room was there. So I'm going to swim up here, and I am in the boss room. So this video is coming near an end here in a second. Um, there's gonna be some little guys just walking around, so just kill them. And, uh, once you do so, you have to look up to the top of the ceiling where you will notice the mini-boss is hanging around. Once you do so, it will trigger a cutscene where he will, uh, drop down some of his eggs, and he will come down after you. Uh, this is a really fat frog thing. It just kind of tries to squish you. He doesn't really attack you a whole bunch, but he spits out eggs which hatch and the little mini things try and attack you. But they don't really do a lot of damage to you. It's pretty simple to defeat them. You just keep on slashing with your sword. They drop a lot of heart pieces, so it's really no trouble at all. So I'm just going to use a spin attack. A uh, nice way to get rid of a lot of them at once since they kind of swarm you. And once you uh, take care of all of his babies, then uh, he will jump up to the top of the ceiling again, and you will just need to watch his shadow and roll out of the way when he tries to land on you. Uh, when he misses, I will stun him so you can smack his tongue. And um, after a couple of hits, he will open his mouth. Uh, if you uh, shoot a bomb arrow into his mouth, it will stun him again where you can shoot uh, or slash at his tongue. Unfortunately, I kept missing, and my timing was off, so I always had to uh, wait for him to release his babies again. 
So, I'm going to take care of these guys again. And it'll take about uh, three times of this, three times of killing his babies and attacking his tongue before he will finally be defeated. So, while I'm doing that, do you have any closing comments? Thanks for watching. <laughs> Alright, don't forget to check out his channel. Do uh, you want to give us uh, your URL real quick? Uh, YouTube.com slash user slash Mr. Zebra Gamer. He's the Mr. Zebra Gamer, and he is a zebra, so... Yep. He's got some pretty cool videos. Um, nice, a let's player. So, check him out. Give him a sub. Maybe two subs. Uh, sign up for another account and sub him. So, uh, thanks for watching this again. Uh, if you guys have not checked out the site, check out LegendZelda.net. That is uh, my main site where I host a lot of these videos at. Uh, I have my walkthrough on there. And uh, we feature a bunch of up-to-date uh, news in the Zelda community. Uh, we are highly focused on Skyward Sword right now since it's the latest thing in Zelda. So um, we also have an active uh, Zelda community at LegendZelda.net slash forums. Worth taking a look into that if you guys like to discuss the series in the whole. But uh, I'm just going to finish watching this video here real quick. I am almost done defeating him. Uh, when you do beat him, you get the hook shot, I believe it's called. It might be the claw shot. I don't know what they call these things anymore. It's the same item with a different name in every game. Yeah. But, um, this item will allow you to attach to various grapple points throughout the dungeon and the game in general. And allows you to uh, advance to areas that you've previously been locked out of. So, as you see, this guy is dead. He's going to flop around for expelling the item in a chest. Um, I'm going to cut this video off here in a second. To exit the room you just have to use the hook shot on one of those special grapple points. You're not going to see that in the video. And uh, until next time, uh, this is Noah Glazer with LegendZelda.net. Thank you for watching and I uh, hope you guys check out my next video.